a peerless expert walking out of the mountains, a mysterious jade pendant that can predict the future. Lin Yi is an ordinary student, but he also carries another important task, which is to chase the school flower. And it's still on the orders of the school flower's father. Although Lin Yi didn't want to deal with this difficult-to-serve young lady, the orders of his elders were hard to disobey. He had to transfer from school to Songshan City and work as a follower for the young lady. So, the most impressive follower in history appeared. The young lady's height fitting hand. Let's see how this attendant got rich and stole the young lady. At the beginning, he was ordered to pick up girls and cows. Chapter 1 Magical Tasks You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Magical Tasks This is your reward for going to North Africa. Old Man Lin carefully took out two wrinkled hundred yuan bills from a well-wrapped piece of cloth and handed them to Lin Yi, who was watching him eagerly. Lin Yi didn't understand that the task he was carrying out was so dangerous, his enemies were so powerful, and the benefits his client gained were so generous, but in the end, his gains were so small. Where did the old man take on these top-notch tasks for himself? Every time it was a close call, and the reward he received was fifty or one hundred. It was okay, there were still three or two yuan left. Every time he thought of these, Lin Yi wanted to cry. Taking the two hundred yuan he exchanged with his life, what Lin Yi wanted to curse the most was, Mom pull an ex. Although he is an orphan, he has never had a mother since childhood. After learning Kung Fu and reading books for fifteen years with Mr. Lin, who raised himself, how can he be considered a versatile person in both literature and martial arts? In ancient times, he was also the top scorer in both civil and military rankings, but he was treated as a laborer like a laborer. When will he be a leader these days? I heard that building houses for people in the city can still earn tens of thousands of dollars a year. I live and die every day, and I only get around 1,800 yuan a year, old man, you're not fooling me, are you? 200 yuan. I really doubt if you're withholding my pay. Lin Yi has suspected this more than once, but the old man is dressed and eating the same as him, and doesn't look like a wealthy person. If you have money, it's good. Do you think the money is so easy to earn now? Old Lin rolled his bulging eyes and said unhappily, Why? Don't you want it? If you don't want it, just give it back to me. It's been a long time since I went to the snack shop at Widow Wang's house in the village to have a tooth festival. Dot. Lin Yi really wanted to give the skinny and frail old man in front of him a beating, but he knew that the result of doing it himself was being beaten. Lin Yi didn't know how powerful old man Lin's martial arts were, but he didn't exert all his strength every time he accompanied him in practicing. Just as my kung fu had risen to a higher level, I suddenly realized that the old man had also risen to a higher level, and I was still his defeated subordinate. All right, you've experienced almost everything these years. It's about time for that big event. Lin didn't even lift his eyelids and sat cross-legged on the kong, smashing a plate of fennel beans in front of him. If you do this task well, you won't have to worry about food and drink for a lifetime. Is it true or not? Lin Yi knew that he had been learning Kung Fu, medical skills, and external knowledge from the old man since he was three years old when he picked up his junk. He was just trying to do something big, but Lin Yi doubted whether the reward for this big thing was as much as the old man had said. One task could last a lifetime. When did I deceive you? Old man Lin threw another fennel bean from the import. Are you going or not? If not, I'll change people. Go, of course I will. Lin Eason said, such a good thing, a fool wouldn't go. A task can last a lifetime, and you don't have to go through so much in the future. Even if it's a dragon pond or tiger's den, it's worth fighting for. Well, then you can go. Go to Songshan City, Pengjian Group, and find a person named Chu Pengjian who will tell you what to do next. Lin's mouth curved with an imperceptible smirk, but you must think carefully. Once you take on this task, you must continue and you cannot withdraw halfway. Why? 
even if there is danger, don't let people run away. Lin Yi is not the kind of person with a single mind. He firmly refuses to do things that he knows will lead to death. Xiaoyi, I have been taking care of you for fifteen years, providing you with food and drink, buying you a laptop, buying you a 3G network card. The old man rolled his eyes and chattered incessantly, let you do something, you just have so many problems. Don't force me. Damn it. Lin Yi couldn't help but feel angry after hearing the old man's words. You raised me three years ago, and since I was six years old, I have been cooking. I chop firewood, and I weave grass shoes to earn money to support you. Don't force me either. You sneak around and use your computer to watch asterisk 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 in the middle of the night, don't think I don't know. The old man glared and said, you forced me to say this. You're still facing the computer. Well. I'll go. I won't run away, will you, blush. Unexpectedly, the old man found out what he had done so secretly. It's a shame. If he continues, he may come up with some inappropriate scenes for children. So, under the coercion and temptation of Mr. Lin, Lin Yi packed his backpack, boarded the train heading north, and traveled thousands of miles to reach Song's Han City, this modern and international metropolis. Sitting on the train, Lin Yi was thinking that in the future, he would need to encrypt asterisk 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 and hide it in the computer system folder. When doing that, he would also have to observe and listen to everything. However, Lin Yi is still looking forward to this task. This kind of good thing that can lead to retirement with just one task is something that Lin Yi dreams of. Although from Lin's words, it seems that this task is not simple. Well, it's not simple that makes it challenging. Pa, a pockmarked man sitting opposite Lin Yi opened a can of soda and casually threw the tab on the table. A small flathead next to the man pretended not to care, picked up the pull ring, played with it in his hand, and after playing with it a few times, suddenly shouted, Wow! 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 First prize! The flat voice, although not very loud in the noisy train carriage, was heard by nearby passengers who looked at him one after another. Mazzy's face was no exception. Seeing that the pull ring in his flat head's hand was exactly what he had just dropped, his expression suddenly became a bit unnatural. Here, this is mine. What's yours? Where did you write your name? Xiao Ping Tu withdrew his right hand and tightly grasped the pull ring in his hand, staring at him. Your name is first prize. No. I'm not calling it the first prize. I lost the first prize pull ring. Ma Zi's face trembled as he saw Xiao Pingtu's fierce appearance, but he didn't want to lose what he deserved, so he said nervously. As you said, it was you who lost it. Since you lost it, whoever finds it will be their own, Xiao Pingtu snorted disdainfully. Hey, how could you be like this? Ma Zi's face suddenly became anxious and he called out to a passenger across from him, who was a bespectacled man sitting on Lin Yi's left. Sir, you look like a scholar. If you give him a review, how could he be like this? Isn't this just playing a rascal? Who's being a scoundrel? Xiao Ping Tu was also unwilling and turned his head to the man with glasses, saying, Master, tell me, who should this pull ring belong to? Hmm. The glasses man pushed his glasses and hesitated for a moment before saying, I'm a university teacher. Since both of you trust me, I'll give you a review. You say, you say. Both the pockmarked face and the small flat head nodded one after another, looking anxiously at the bespectacled man who claimed to be a university teacher. In theory, this pull ring was pulled down by this big brother from the beverage can, so it should be his. The glasses man said halfway, and the pockmarked face showed a proud expression. The small flat head suddenly became anxious. Just as he was about to say something, the glasses man waved his hand and stopped him, continuing, but since this big brother has already thrown away the pull ring and was picked up by this brother again, it should belong to this brother later. But you also said that the pull ring is mine. The pockmarked man with glasses said, and immediately his face turned sad. 
In my opinion, it's better to split the prize equally between the two of you, so that no one will suffer, suggested the man with glasses. Divide. After listening, Xiaoping Tu hesitated for a moment, gritted his teeth, and said, okay, then divide. Perhaps Xiaoping Tu also felt that his reasoning was somewhat untenable, so he agreed to the suggestion of the glasses man. And the pockmarked face over there also saw the pull ring clenched in the small flathead's hand. If he didn't agree, he might not even be able to catch the hair, so it was better to split it in half. So he nodded in agreement. Okay, since you all agree, then let's split up. The man with glasses took a look at the can in his pockmarked face's hand and said, it's written on it that the first prize is 100,000 yuan, and after deducting 20% of personal income tax, there is still 80,000 yuan left. However, since receiving the prize is quite tedious, which of you two should go and receive it, give the other person 30,000 yuan and then go and receive it yourself. What do you think of this idea? Okay. Ma Zilian agreed directly as he could get some money. You can give me 30,000 yuan, and then you can go and collect the prize. Chapter 2 Scams You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Scams, um Xiao Ping hesitated and instinctively touched his pocket, then said, I didn't bring that much money either. How about you give me 30,000? You can go and collect the prize. I don't have it either. What should I do, said the pockmarked person with a worried expression, do you think I can pull out 30,000 yuan like this? Teacher, could you think of a way for us? Neither of us brought that much money. The pockmarked face once again applied for assistance from the glasses man. The man with glasses pondered for a moment before tentatively saying, how about I give your family 30,000 yuan and you give me the zipper so I can redeem the prize? Ma Zilian and Xiao Pingtu looked at each other for a moment, thinking that they could still each get 30,000 yuan. So they agreed and said, okay, let's do it this way. The man with glasses suddenly showed a look of joy, then took his briefcase and started looking for money. At first, his expression was still very joyful. However, as he flipped through his bags faster, the man with glasses's face became increasingly ugly, and beads of sweat began to seep out of his forehead. Finally, he sighed and said, it's broken. When I went out today, I didn't bring much money, I only had 30,000 yuan. You definitely wouldn't sell it either. It's really unlucky to see that the money I got is so gone. Ah. The pockmarked face and the small flat head were both dumbfounded. The man with glasses didn't bring any money, and neither of them had any money. How can we divide this prize? So, the pockmarked face couldn't sit still and said, Teacher, you have knowledge and culture. Can you help us think of a way? Hey, how about this? Ask someone else. The man with glasses said, turning his face to Lin Yi sitting beside him. Little brother, this is a once.in.a.lifetime opportunity to get rich. Do you have money? Give them 30,000 yuan each, and then you can take the ring to receive the prize. You can earn 20,000 yuan in one go. Is there any way to make more money than this? If I didn't bring money, I would have gotten this good thing myself. Previously, Lin Yi had been watching these three people act with cold eyes. It was obvious that they were all part of the same group, with a pockmarked face as the first party, a small flat head as the second party, and a glasses man as the support. Although Lin Yi grew up in the mountains, he is not a fool either. Don't be fooled by the rustic attire he wears, but when it comes to knowledge, there are not many people who are his opponents, let alone these three inexperienced fraudsters. Me. Lin Yi pretended to be surprised and pointed to himself, then said, can I? Okay, this good thing is happening to you now. Lin Yi asked if it was possible instead of saying he didn't have any money. The man with glasses was immediately overjoyed. You know, if that's the case, 80% of the bags have goods. Just as Lin Yi was about to say something more, he felt like his leg had been kicked. Lin Yi used his spare light to glance at his right side, 
which was a very beautiful girl, about the same age as Lin Yi. Her hair is as fair as water, and her skin is fair. Although she has never stood up, according to Lin Yi's eyes, the girl is at least 1.65 meters tall, which can be considered a tall figure. After getting on the train, Lin Yi quietly listened to the MP3 player. He originally wanted to chat with her and relieve his boredom on the way, but unfortunately, the little girl kept wearing earplugs, leaving Lin Yi at a loss. At this moment, the girl was looking at Lin Yi anxiously, wanting to say something, but also somewhat hesitant. Can only hint at Lin Yi with his eyes. Lin Yi naturally knew the girl's intention, which was not to let him fall for it. Lin Yi's heart suddenly warmed. Isn't it true that people in big cities are very indifferent? Seeing that it's not personal, she hangs up high, and the girl's ability to remind herself indicates that she has a good heart. So, the girl's image in Lin Yi's mind suddenly increased several points. Being beautiful is important for a girl, but if she has a malicious heart, no matter how beautiful she is, it is of no use. This is Lin Yi's evaluation criteria for girls. Ahem. The little flat head across from the girl seemed to notice her behavior, and suddenly coughed loudly, glaring at the girl fiercely. The girl turned pale in fear and lowered her head. Of course, these small details cannot escape Lin Yi's eyes. However, Lin Yi was already bored during the journey. He got angry with the old man at home and had nowhere to vent his anger. A few silly hats happened to come knocking on the door, so how could Lin Yi miss this opportunity to tease them? However, although the girl lowered her head, she still kicked Lin Yi with her feet, giving him a warning. But Lin Yi didn't seem to feel anything ordinary and remained unmoved at all. I only have 49,000, not that much. Lin Yi pretended to be honest and said truthfully. The pockmarked face and the small flat head on the opposite side heard that Lin Yi had 49,000 yuan, and their eyes immediately shone brightly. However, their faces still had a bitter melon face. Only 49,000 yuan, isn't it a bit less? How much can we get each other? 49 divided by 2, it's 20.4 thousand and 5 thousand. Xiao Ping Tu calculated and said. 24,500 yuan. That's quite a lot, I agree. What about you? Ma Zilian nodded quickly after hearing this. Okay, since you all agree, then I agree too. Xiao Ping nodded and said, Give me the money. Lin Yi opened his backpack and took out a small bag wrapped in newspaper. He opened it layer by layer, revealing five layers of bound banknotes inside. This is 40.9 thousand, that's all. You can count it. Lin Yi said very plainly, you give me the pull ring. These money are the living expenses that the old man gave Lin Yi for the next ten years. In recent years, Lin Yi has made a lot of money for the old man. Let's talk about the assassination mission in North Africa last time. According to international conventions, at least a few hundred thousand yuan should be given as compensation, right? However, when he was about to leave, the old man rummaged through a broken bag and found a 49,000 yuan, claiming that it was all the family's belongings and letting him save some money. This makes Lin Yi very depressed. Is the old man really broke or is he pretending to be poor? But it's not like pretending. The old man eats the same food as himself every day and doesn't see what he enjoys. Did you overestimate the remuneration for those tasks too much? Okay, okay. Ma Zi's face and Xiao Ping's head were like hungry wolves, dividing the money in front of them and handing the pull ring to Lin Yi. Lin Yi carefully put the pull ring on his body, afraid of losing it, and was as careful as a treasure. Seeing three scammers succeed, the girl sitting next to Lin Yi sighed helplessly. Looking at Lin Yi's excited winning appearance, the girl really didn't know what to say. The money was in hand, and the three scammers regained their previous calmness, as if they didn't know each other, each doing their own thing. Chapter 3 Are You Rich? You are listening at novelfull.audio
Chapter 3 Wang Xinyan the girl no longer kicked Lin Yi's legs, but leaned against the car window and quietly listened to her MP3 player. The Song's Han station has arrived. Passengers who have disembarked are requested to prepare. This stop will take 15 minutes. The announcement of the arrival came from the train's broadcast, and Lin Yi also began to pack his luggage and prepare to get off. Unexpectedly, the girls around them also started packing up their luggage, obviously getting off at Song's Han station. When the girls stood up, Lin Yi took a glance and guessed correctly that the girl's height was about 1.65 meters. After getting off the train, Lin Yi was amazed and looked at the magnificent buildings in the train station. Although he had visited here once ten years ago, ten years later today, Song's Han has undergone earth-shaking changes. Wait a moment. A sweet female voice sounded behind Lin Yi, who stopped and instinctively turned back. It was the girl sitting next to me on the train just now, waving her hand and running towards me quickly. Is there anything wrong? Lin Yi naturally wouldn't believe that a girl would fall in love with her at first sight. Although she looks quite handsome, her outfit is just too tacky. Wearing khaki pants and a white vest, dressed like migrant workers looking for work in the city. You're not thinking about going to redeem the prize, are you? The girl said with some resentment. She was angry, and why did Lin Yi ignore her reminder on the train before? Oh, you're talking about this. Lin Yi took out the zipper from his pocket and casually threw it onto the roadside. Ah. This time it's the girl's turn to be dumbfounded. She never expected that Lin Yi would make such a move. You. You threw it away. The girl pointed at Lin Yi in surprise and opened her mouth wide. Well, I threw it away. Lin Yi nodded and said, it was originally fake, so it's useless to keep it. Do you know it's fake? The girl listened to Lin Yi's words and suddenly couldn't turn a corner. She looked at Lin Yi foolishly, what's going on with this person? Knowing it's fake, still spending money to buy it. Is it a mental illness? Judging from his appearance, he doesn't seem to be that kind of wicked wealthy person. I know. Even if I don't know, you reminded me on the train. Lin Yi said. So you still give them the money? The girl suddenly became anxious. What kind of person is this? Lin Yi smiled, took off his backpack from his shoulder, unzipped it, and opened it in front of the girl. The girl looked at Lin Yi in surprise, then lowered her head and looked into Lin Yi's backpack, suddenly startled. There are actually seven or eight bundles of banknotes inside. Are you very rich? Even if you have money, you can't spend it recklessly. The girl didn't quite understand what Lin Yi meant, thinking that Lin Yi was doing this to show how rich he was. This is the money just now, Lin Yi said. What did you mean by the money just now? The girl didn't understand. Are you saying you brought the money back? Isn't it only 40.9 thousand? This is all 70 or 80 thousand, right? The man with glasses still has 30 thousand yuan in his hand, which I took with me, Lin Yi shrugged and said. This is just a small gesture, it's just a piece of cake. For Lin Yi, it's as simple as ever. Ha! Huh. The girl was completely foolish this time. It's not that Lin Yi has a problem, but that he has a superior skill. Not only did he get his own money back, but he also gave the money to the man with glasses smoothly. What's wrong with this expression? You're not trying to report me for stealing, are you? You have a strong sense of justice. Lin Yi looked at the surprised expression on the girl's face and smiled teasingly. Of course not, the girl blushed and shook her head. But I really thank you before. There aren't many girls like you anymore, Lin Yi said sincerely. I'll treat you to a meal later. No. The girl shook her head hesitantly and said, My family is waiting for me at the exit. After hearing this, Lin Yi nodded but did not insist. Picking girls is a technical job, but we also need to pay attention to fate. Being too deliberate would have the opposite effect. Then don't disturb me. 
Wang Xinyan looked at Lin Yuan's back and shook her head. This is really a very peculiar person. If it weren't for her mother waiting for her at the exit, Wang Xinyan wouldn't mind getting in touch with Lin Yidua. It's not that Wang Xinyan has any favoritism towards Lin Yi, it's just that she feels that Lin Yi is a bit different. She carries so much money in her backpack and doesn't deposit it in the bank. She can't wear any more tacky clothes, but she has an indescribable temperament. Sir, do you want to stay in a hotel? It's very cheap. As soon as Lin Yi left the train station, he was surrounded by a group of people soliciting guests from nearby hotels. This kind of migrant worker like attire is a key focus of business for these small hotels. Rich people who stay in such small hotels don't need to come out to attract customers, even big hotels. Lin Yi waved his hand and squeezed through the encirclement of the few passers-by, walking towards the taxi stop on the square. Lin Yi held a note in his hand, which was the address given to him by the old man before leaving. I got into a taxi and the taxi driver enthusiastically asked, Young man, where are you going? Go to this address. Lin Yi handed the note in his hand to the taxi driver. This driver belongs to the area specifically mixed around the train station, and he is very accurate in seeing customers. At first glance, Lin Yi is from another city, probably coming to work, so he thought black about him. Anyway, he is not familiar with the road. He happily took the note handed over by Lin Yi and glanced at the address on it. The driver's face immediately turned green. The note read. Number 36 Guangming Avenue, Pengzhan Building, Songshan City. 11.2 kilometers away from the train station, take the new second ring bridge. Even the route has been designed, and the mileage markers are clear. Who else is going to go black? However, what is this young man doing at Pengzhan Building? That's the largest group company in Songshan City. Does this guy dressed as a migrant worker know the people inside? The driver sighed and threw the note aside, honestly driving the car. The transportation in Songs Han is very good, with many bridges. Lin Yi felt that as soon as he got up and down, he arrived at his destination, paid 24 yuan for the car, and then got off the car. Looking at such a tall building in front of him, Lin Yi felt a bit dizzy. It seemed like it was even higher than the mountains in his hometown. It seems that my employer is very wealthy, but as the old man said, one task can last a lifetime. I just don't know if jumping off top will cause me to fall and die. However, when I was in my hometown, I was kicked by the old man from the mountaintop directly into the ravine, but I didn't fall to death. I just lay in bed with a swollen face and a blue nose for several days. After confirming the door number and the name of the building, Lin Yi swaggered towards the building. Chapter 4 Dog Eyes Look Down on People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Who Are You Looking For? Sir, Who Are You Looking For? Just a few steps away, Lin Yi was stopped by the security guard of the building. Wait a minute, let me take a look, Lin Yisen said. It's still a formal big city with security guards, but these security guards are just a gimmick and not as powerful as Air Guzi. Air Guzi is a playmate of Lin Yi. Although he doesn't know Kung Fu, he can kill a cow with just one punch. In Lin Yi's opinion, this security guard is far inferior to a cow, not as strong as a cow. Lin Yi took out another note from his pocket, looked at the words on it, and then said, I'll find Chu Pengzhan. Chu Pengzhan. Who is it? Why is this name so familiar? The security guard was taken aback and silently recited it in his mouth. Chairman. Another older security guard standing aside reacted quickly and immediately thought of what kind of person Chu Pengzhan was. He was startled and quickly pulled at the corner of the previous security guard's clothes, whispering, Don't speak recklessly. If the captain hears you, be careful not to get fired. Ah. The previous security guard was startled when he heard the old security guard's words, his eyes widened, and he regretted talking too much just now. What's the point of talking nonsense? Now that it's okay, I don't even know the chairman. 
What else are you doing as a security guard? Who should we protect? However, when the security guard looked at Lin Yi's attire and his eyes twitched, he didn't feel scared anymore. It seemed that Lin Yi didn't seem to have any connection with the chairman at all. One was the chairman of a super large group in the Fortune 500, and the other was a migrant worker from the countryside who went to the city. It seemed like there was no connection, right? This kid can't be from any construction site. He came to complain to the chairman, right? Thinking of this, the security guard suddenly became more vigilant. A few days ago, I just watched a similar movie called, What Owes Me 105,000, in which a migrant worker went to the chairman for money. Thinking of this, the security guard and the old security guard exchanged a glance, obviously, both of them wanted to go together. What are you looking for Chairman Chu for? The old security guard cleared his throat and stared at Lin Yi with a serious expression, afraid that he would make any extreme moves. It's not me looking for him, it's my old man asking me to find him, Lin Yang said lazily. Lin Yi doesn't care at all about the identity of his employer in reality, as he always seeks to do things for himself. Hmm. Your old man. After hearing Lin Yi's words, the two security guards were even more convinced that they had it. In the movie, the migrant worker was asking for money for his brother, and the kid in front of him must be asking for money for his old man. Come on, don't talk about those useless things. Just say which floor Chu Pengzhan is on and I'll go find him. Lin Yi didn't have time to talk nonsense to these two little security guards, so let's quickly meet the main leader before we talk. The chairman is not here, you can leave. The old security guard glanced at Lin Yi again, confirming that he should have no connection with the chairman, and directly issued an order to remove the guest. Lin Yi was too lazy to ink with these two people, and their eyes naturally caught Lin Yi's eye. Lin Yi could guess exactly what they were thinking. Isn't it just because of his rustic demeanor? A dog's eyes look down on people. Since he's not here, I'll go in and wait for him. Lin Yi finished speaking and strode towards the company. Wait, you can't go in. The two security guards didn't expect Lin Yi to dare to break in and quickly wanted to stop him. At this moment, the elevator door on the first floor opened, and a slightly plump middle-aged man and a somewhat thin middle-aged man walked out of the elevator together. The time should be around, why hasn't Xiaoyi contacted me yet? Li Fu, why don't you just drive to the station to pick me up? You've already seen the photos, haven't you? The somewhat wealthy middle-aged man ordered another thin and black middle-aged man. Okay, Mr. Chen, I'll go over right away, Li Fu quickly said respectfully. Before Li Fu could leave, Chu Pengzhan heard the sound of arguments at the entrance of the company. He frowned and said to Li Fu, can you go and see what's going on first? What's going on? Li Fu walked quickly towards the direction of the company gate and saw two security guards blocking a young man from entering the company. Fubo, this person said he wanted to find the chairman and forcibly broke into the company. The security guard naturally recognized Li Fu. Although Li Fu did not have a specific administrative position in the company, he was the closest person to the chairman. If you insist on his position in the company, then you can only say that he is the driver of Chairman Chu. However, everyone in the company knows that Li Fu is not just a driver. So these security guards didn't even consider Li Fu as a driver, but respected him like a leader. In many cases, Li Fu's words represent the chairman's intention. You. Li Fu looked at Lin Yi and widened his eyes, saying in surprise, Are you Lin Yi? It's me. Lin Yi glanced at Li Fu and nodded. Since Li Fu appeared, he has been paying attention to this person. Based on intuition, this person should not be Chu Pengzhan. As the chairman of a group, there is naturally a sense of authority from the upper echelons, but this person does not. Although he is serious and respected, his aura cannot be changed. Hello. Li Fu knew how much Chu Pengzhan valued the young man in front of him, so when he confirmed Lin Yi's identity, he didn't dare to slack off and quickly reached out his hand to shake hands with Lin Yi. 
I am Chairman Chu's secretary, Li Fu. The chairman was about to pick you up at the train station, but I didn't expect you to have arrived. It's okay, just pretend to be familiar with the road. Lin Yi smiled and shook hands with Li Fu. Lin Yi's personality is like this. You respect me, and I respect you too. Seeing Li Fu so polite, Lin Yi felt a bit embarrassed. The chairman is over there, please follow me and meet him together. Li Fu made a gesture of invitation and then walked ahead to lead the way. The two security guards before were stunned as they looked at Lin Yi's back and opened their mouths in surprise. Is he really a guest of the chairman? The little security guard muttered to himself in disbelief. If Fubo came to pick him up himself, there wouldn't be any mistake. The old security guard sighed, I almost offended him. Thanks to Fubo's timely arrival, if we really kicked him out, we'll have to eat and walk around. As Li Fu walked over, Lin Yi began to pay attention to another middle-aged man with a slightly wealthy figure not far away. If he guessed correctly, this was the person he wanted to meet, Chu Punjan, the director of Punjan Group. Lin Yi, right. As Lin Yi followed Li Fu over, Chu Pengzhan also strode towards this side and kindly extended his right hand. Friends of Lao Yu, please vote for your recommendation and save it. Thank you. Although our new book may have fewer words, can we keep it healthy and read it? Thank you, friends. How is Chapter 5 like finding a partner? You are listening at novelfull.audio. How does Chapter 0005 look like finding a partner? Lin Yi smiled slightly and nodded, then shook hands with Chu Pengzhan naturally. Lin Yi was very adept at handling this normal social etiquette and said, Hello, Mr. Chu. Chu Pengzhan's enthusiasm surprised Lin Yi a bit. It was the first time he had met such a passionate employer. Although he said he had invited him to perform a certain task, the chairman of a Fortune 500 listed company treated him so well, which made Lin Yi curious. How could it feel like a meeting at the same level? Mr. Lin. I also know that perhaps it would be a bit difficult for you to condescend to do these things. Chu Pengzhan hesitated for a moment and said. As Chu Pengzhan spoke more and more, he became more and more outrageous. Even a person with such thick skin as Lin Yi felt a bit embarrassed and quickly said, I won't compromise. I only earn a few hundred yuan in a month by weaving grass shoes at home. The old man said this task is enough for me to eat for a lifetime. Lin Eason said, this employer is so kind. He asked himself to do things, and he was so polite. Unlike some people who give themselves compensation and start talking nonsense. What? Weaving grass shoes. Chu Pengzhan was taken aback and carefully looked at Lin Yi. He didn't mistake anyone, did he? But what is this guy talking about? Does Lin Lao ask him to weave grass shoes every day to earn that few hundred yuan? Chu Pengzhan was a bit speechless. He also vaguely heard some stories about Lin Yi from his own grandfather. The reward for rescuing hostages in Africa alone should have been billions of dollars, and he could even make money by weaving grass shoes. Yeah, a pair of grass shoes can sell for 4 yuan. If you make three or five pairs a day, it will be several hundred in a month. Lin Yi nodded, feeling a bit off. The old man didn't seem like a poor guy, did he? Chu Pengzhan couldn't manage the other person's private affairs either. After listening to Lin Yi's words, he shook his head helplessly and said, Your salary will be 30,000 yuan per month from now on. These wallets include your tuition and daily expenses for school. Of course, the money spent on my daughter can be reimbursed by Li Fu. 30,000 yuan. Didn't the old man say a few thousand yuan? Lin Yi was stunned for a moment, wasn't he? Such a high salary. If I had known how much money this would bring, Lin Yi remembered the scene when he asked for this 49,000 yuan from the old man. Wait, Mr. Chu, what did you just say? School. Miscellaneous expenses. And money spent on your daughter. What does this mean? I don't understand. 
Lin Yi was puzzled. What exactly did Chu Punjan mean? Didn't he come to carry out the task? Oh. What, didn't Mr. Lin tell you before? Please come this way, let's go upstairs to discuss the specific situation. Chu Punjan smiled slightly and made a gesture of invitation, walking shoulder to shoulder with Lin Yi towards the elevator. How to say that now Chu Punjan is also his own employer, and the salary he pays himself is really not low. Although he is somewhat inexplicable about what Chu Punjan said, Lin Yi has also encountered many strange tasks in recent years. So, when Lin Yi and Chu Punjan walked together, they deliberately slowed down their pace, making themselves look like they were following behind him. However, Chu Punjan deliberately kept pace with Lin Yi. Lin Yi naturally looked in his eyes and felt a bit surprised. How could he feel that Chu Punjan's attitude towards him was too friendly? Although Lin Yi was strange, he did not speak up to inquire. After all, it was his first time meeting Chu Punjan, and the two were not very familiar. There were some things that were difficult to say too much, and as time went on, they would naturally understand. Chu Punjan's office is located on the top floor of Punjan building, which is 200 square meters in size. One wall is full of large French window, making the light in the room particularly bright. After allowing Chu Pengzhan and Lin Yi into the office, Fubo retreated and instructed the secretary outside to pour tea before entering. Mr. Lin, may I ask what you want to drink? Xiao Shi already knew Lin Yi's surname from Fubo's mouth. Let's drink plain water. Lin Yi usually drinks plain water the most at home, and it's the same when he comes out. She was taken aback for a moment, but still smiled and said, Okay, please wait a moment. As for what Chairman Chu drinks, she doesn't need to ask because it's the same every day. Mr. Lin, starting from tomorrow, Fubo will arrange for you to enter class 5 of grade 3 at Songs Han No. 1 High School, becoming a high school student. You will be in the same class as your daughter Chu Mengyao, going to school and school together every day, taking care of her life, and guiding her homework when you return home. In other words, it's just being a companion with her. I have been busy with business these years and feel guilty for not taking care of my daughter. I want to find someone who can talk to her and give her more care. This is the real reason why I came to you. You are about the same age as her, and we are all young people. There should be a common topic, right? Chu Punjan said. With a slight smile, he said. Lin Yi was a bit stunned. Why find someone to talk to? Give her care. Common topic. No, right. Is this the so dot called mission that can last a lifetime? Why does it sound more like finding a partner? I don't know if this little girl has any underlying physiological problems and won't be able to get married. Can you recharge her account? Mr. Lin, what's wrong with you? Chu Pengzhan saw Lin Yi's surprised expression, as if he knew what he was thinking. I thought Mr. Lin had already told you what you were going to do this time, but now it seems that's not the case. Mr. Chu, why don't you call me Lin Yi? Mr. Lin is a bit awkward, Lin Yi said with a bitter smile. To be honest, I really didn't know what I was going to do before. The old man just said this is an important task, and if I do it well, I can eat it for a lifetime. Eating for a lifetime. Chu Pengzhan was shocked after hearing Lin Yi's words, but then burst into laughter. Ha ha ha, not bad. Mr. Lin didn't deceive you either. You did it well, and the reward you received is indeed enough to eat for a lifetime. Um. Lin Yi still didn't understand what Chu Pengzhan wanted to do on his own. But what exactly is my task? I've said it before, haven't I? You accompany my daughter to and from school to study together. Of course, you're also responsible for protecting her safety and not letting anyone bully her, Chu Pengzhan explained. Accompanying reading. Nanny. This is the only adjective that Lin Yi can think of. Um. You can also understand it that way, in fact, it's the same. Chu Pengzhan nodded, but before Lin Yi could say anything more, 
he handed Lin Yi a copy of the information. This is the information for Songs Han Number 1 Middle School, you can familiarize yourself with it first. Lin Yi nodded helplessly and took the information. This is what the old man called a super task. Shouldn't you be fooled again if you scolded the neighbor? Just like last time we went to South America, the old man told himself to go save someone. But in the end, where is saving someone? It's saving a group of people anyway, there is a high reward to take, and the danger of this task is quite low. It's just a bit of a wealthy lady's lackey nature, but it doesn't matter, let's just rest. Although Songs Han Number 1 High School is called Number 1 High School, it is actually a private high school for a long time. It was only renamed when it was acquired, and Chu Pengzhan's Pengzhan Group is one of the three major shareholders of the school. No wonder I haven't even attended elementary school, so I can easily be arranged to attend this high school. Although Lin Yi has never attended school, one can also learn online how difficult it is for children with rural household registration to go to school in the city. Okay, I will do my job well, Lin Yi nodded after briefly reading the materials. Of course, Chu Mengyao may not have a good temper, but this child is actually pretty good, Chu Pengzhan said with a bitter smile. I believe you are so excellent that you can get along well with her. Harmony Lin Yi didn't expect to get along well with this young lady, and he wasn't dating anyone. What's the point of getting along so well? However, Lin Yi said, I'll do my best. Chu Pengzhan seemed to have noticed Lin Yi's perfunctory behavior, smiled slightly, and then called out to the office door, Fubo, Yao Yao is about to finish school. You go pick him up and take Mr. Lin to familiarize yourself with the environment. Mr. Chu, just call me Lin Yi, or even Xiao Yi. Don't call me Mr. Lin, it sounds a bit awkward, Lin Yi said. Okay, then I'll call you Xiao Yi. After all, I'm your elder and you won't be at a disadvantage. Don't call me Mr. Chu, just call me Uncle Chu. Chu Pengzhan nodded and didn't dwell on this issue. Lin Yi nodded and followed Fubo downstairs, taking the elevator all the way to the parking lot located on the basement floor of the building. Seeking recommended tickets and bookmarks. Thank you all friends, although the book is not yet fat, we can keep it now, but don't forget to vote. Who is this bumpkin in Chapter 6? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 0006 Shield for those who have recommended votes, please do not hesitate to cast a few, thank you. In the parking lot, there are quite a few luxury cars, ranging from Mercedes-Benz and BMW to top-tier RVs, many of which are obviously dressed up as private cars with some flashy decorations, indicating that they were bought by the group employees themselves. In this way, it can be inferred from the side how high the employee income of Pungjang Group is. It seems that my salary of 30,000 yuan is not very high. Under the guidance of Fubo, Lin Yi arrived next to a dark blue Bentley Accord 728. The car was a 06 model and was well maintained. It's unclear whether it's a new purchase or a regular one. The car looks very brand new. Mr. Lin, please get in the car. Fubera opened the passenger door and sat in a friendly position. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. Mississippi then. Lin Yi hesitated for a moment and asked. Miss sits in the back row every day, said Fubo. She has a backpack and sitting in the front row is inconvenient. Lin Yi nodded and got into the car. Fubo drove the car slowly into the underground parking lot. As they passed by the security guard at the exit, Several security guards immediately stood up and watched the car leave with a solemn expression. Fubo's driving skills are very proficient, but it can be seen that they belong to the average type, which is not the same routine as what Lin Yi usually learns. Lin Yi Xue, on the other hand, leans more towards racing. There's no other way, as the old man at home once said, it's not your fault if you can't win. If you can't win and still run, it's just unlucky. So, Lin Yi learned a lot of escape skills, although these skills were only used by the old man alone, in front of others, they were all part of others running away. 
Mr. Lin, can you drive? Fubo asked as he waited for the traffic light and glanced at Lin Yi sitting quietly beside him. Fubo is an old driver who can see people very accurately. Usually, when someone is sitting in a car, he can always judge whether they can drive from some details. However, Lin Yi obviously has no special reaction, so Fubo asked. A little bit, Lin Yi thought to herself. As a newcomer, it's better to be humble. Do you have a driver's license? Fubo didn't ask to what extent it would be, and he also knew the boss's trust in this person. Not yet. Lin Yi shook his head. Although he could drive and even drove abroad, he didn't have a driver's license. I just turned 18 and didn't have time to get one. All right, give me your ID card and I'll help you get a driver's license. If Mr. Chu and I have any last dot minute matters, you can drive Miss Tu and from school, said Fubo. The car stopped near a luxurious looking school, but did not move forward, probably because the car was too I dot catching and had a negative impact on other students. In terms of information, Lin Yi has learned that although Song's Han No. 1 High School is a private high school, it is not the kind of aristocratic school imagined, but a provincial dot level key high school that recruits students through provincial exams. Although there are some children of powerful and wealthy families who enter through relationships, most students are admitted through their own strength. Due to the support of the three major groups behind it, Songs Han No. 1 High School is superior to other schools in terms of software, hardware, and teaching staff, which is also the reason for the 100% enrollment rate in recent years. In fact, Lin Yi also understood that this 100% must have some moisture. Some playboys don't even know how to study, but they eventually went to college, thanks to the energy in their families. The familiar bell for the end of class rang, causing Lin Yi to feel a bit lost. How many years have you not heard this sound again? However, after a brief moment of unconsciousness, Lin Yi returned to normal and looked calmly at the school playground. Not long after, students gradually walked out of the teaching building, some wearing school uniforms and others wearing other clothes. Generally speaking, there were no major events, and the school did not make special requirements for students' clothing. That's Miss, Fubo suddenly raised his hand and pointed to a girl among a group of male and female students walking out not far away. Lin Yi looked in the direction of Fubo's fingers, and saw a tall and very beautiful girl. Although there were other girls around her, Lin Yi only took a glance and guessed that this must be a young lady. Because the old man once said that Chu Meng Yao is the school flower of the school, and the so dot called school flower should be the most beautiful one, unless there is a problem with Lin Yi's aesthetic perspective. Although the other girl next to her has an outstanding appearance, her figure is slightly petite, which clearly does not match the height on the information. However, it also belongs to one of the promising school flower candidates, and as they grow up, it will definitely be a disaster for the country and the people. Chu Meng Yao and the girl were walking briskly towards the car, but several young men who looked like young masters were relentlessly chasing after them. Meng Yao, wait a moment. One of the young masters stood in front of Chu Meng Yao and said, Meng Yao, I am sincere to you. Give me a chance. Chu Meng Yao frowned and looked at the boy in front of her impatiently, Zhong Pin Liang, are you bothering me? I've told you before, I don't like you. Don't bother me anymore. But. Zhong Pin Liang wanted to say something more, but was pushed aside by Chu Meng Yao, understanding him. Chu Meng Yao walked over quickly, opened the car door and got into the car, while the girl she was with also got into the car, which surprised Lin Yi slightly. This Zhong Pin Liang bothers me so much. He keeps pestering me every day, doesn't he feel tired? Chu Meng Yao got into the car, complaining incessantly. Suddenly, she looked up and saw Lin Yi in the passenger seat. She was surprised and said, Who are you? Hello, my name is Lin Yi. Lin Yi worked hard to make herself look cute. This young lady doesn't seem to have a good temper. Lin Yi. Fubo, what does he do? Chu Meng Yao looked at Lin Yi inexplicably. Miss Chu, this is the accompanying reader Mr. Chu has invited for you. 
Fubo introduced. Accompanying reading. Who needs accompanying reading? Didn't I say I wanted to find a shield? Look at him like this, who can you block me from? Chu Mengyao became anxious and looked up and down at Lin Yi. What is this guy wearing? With a big heart and torn pants, he looks like a migrant worker entering the city. Even migrant workers don't have the same attire as him. Does he think this is singing a duet? Fulberton was sweating profusely and wiped his forehead. He looked at Lin Yi with some helplessness and breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that he had no special reaction. He was the closest person to Chu Pengzhan, so he also knew some insider information. He knew how hard it took to ask Lin Yi to come out, and even the old master at home came forward. Chapter 7 One Kick to Fly You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 0007 Lin Yi's Handling Methods Readers of Old Fish, please submit some recommendations and save them. Old Fish, thank you again. Miss, Mr. Chu said that Mr. Lin Yi is a versatile talent, capable of both literature and martial arts, so it's natural for him to be a mere shield. Fubo quickly explained. In order to prevent Chu Mengyao from worrying, Chu Pengzhan did not tell her some things and also instructed Fubo not to tell her. Inviting Lin Lai may seem like taking care of Chu Mengyao's studies and life, but it actually has another profound meaning, involving an agreement with the older generation in the family but obviously, if Chu Mengyao were to provide a companion reading without hesitation, she would definitely not agree. However, coincidentally, Chu Mengyao was exhausted from dealing with some people pursuing her, so she approached Chu Pengzhan and asked him to help hire a shield to come over and help her fend off the flies around her. So, Chu Pengzhan even deceived and recommended Lin Yi as a shield to Chu Mengyao. But, Fubo really regrets not taking Lin Yi to the clothing store to dress up properly. According to Fubo's photos of Lin Yi, he still looks quite energetic, but his style is a bit unique and not suitable for the environment around him, he. Chu Mengyao couldn't see anything special about the man in front of her. He couldn't be a migrant worker who had just entered the city to work, could he? The girl next to Chu Mengyao covered her mouth and chuckled, because Lin Yi's outfit didn't look like someone who could act as a shield for Chu Mengyao. Xiao Shu, what are you laughing at? Chu Mengyao was already very angry about her father's perfunctory behavior. Seeing that her best friend was also secretly laughing, she immediately stopped laughing and glared at her fiercely. Chen Yushu was scolded by Chu Mengyao and quickly spat out his tongue, closed his mouth, but his eyes were curiously fixed on Lin Yi. Fubo, tell him to get off the car, I want to change people. Chu Mengyao frowned, unwilling to argue further on this issue. Miss, Mr. Chu has said that Mr. Lin Yi is definitely capable and has already signed the contract. Fubo's implicit meaning is that if you don't agree, there is no way. Chu Pengzhan has already made the decision for you, and this matter cannot be changed. Ah! Chu Mengyao's beautiful big eyes blinked, almost crying. I really don't know what her father thinks. Instead of doing this, it's better not to find any shield. If this person stays by her side, wouldn't it be hilarious? Originally, if this shield looked good, Chu Mengyao would still want to publicly claim to be her boyfriend, after all, the best way to drive away those flies is like this. But now it seems obviously impossible. Even if he claims that this bumpkin is his boyfriend, someone must believe him. Zhong Pinliang probably would laugh his teeth out. Lin Yi's head suddenly swelled as he listened to the conversation between these few people. A shield. This little girl doesn't really want to find a partner, does she? No wonder Chu Pengzhan was so strange when he talked to him before. Could it be that he was really looking for a son? In law? Okay, that boy over there was pestering me just now. Can you help me deal with it? If you handle it well, you'll pass the level. Chu Mengyao's eyes twitched and she thought to herself. Anyway, if this guy doesn't know how to handle it, he can use his incompetence as a reason to get his father fired. Is he? Lin Yi nodded, got off the car, 
and walked quickly towards Zhong Qinliang. This Chu Mengyao is always rejected every time I ask her out. If it were another woman, she would have rushed to my embrace long ago. Zhong Pinliang complained to several attendants displeased. Zhong Xiao, but this Chu Mengyao is not an ordinary woman. She is the daughter of Pengzhan group, and it is normal for her to have difficulty, said a follower of Zhong Pinliang named Gao Xiaofu. I know, what else do you say? Zhong Pinliang waved his hand and said, so you need to have perseverance. Before Zhong Pinliang could finish speaking, he saw a young man wearing a white vest and earth yellow pants that had already turned a bit yellow walking towards him at full speed, and he was momentarily stunned. Lin Yi walked quickly to Zhong Pinliang's side, without saying a word, lifted his leg and kicked him in the butt groove, directly kicking Zhong Pinliang and lying on the ground. Then Lin Yi turned around and walked straight back towards the car without looking back. Zhong Pinliang was about to give a speech on his feelings towards pursuing Chu Mengyao, but as he spoke happily, he felt like his butt had been kicked hard and he fell unsteadily to the ground. Who? Don't want to live anymore. Dare to kick me. Zhong Pinliang struggled for a while before getting up from the ground and cursed with a disheveled face. That migrant worker just now. Gao Xiaofu quickly said. What are you still doing in a daze? Hurry up and chase after him. Zhong Pinliang shouted angrily, get him and hit him hard. Zhong Xiao, he's nowhere to be seen. Just now, Zhong Pinliang was kicked down by Lin Yi, and several subordinates focused their attention on whether Zhong Pinliang was okay. As a result, in the blink of an eye, the migrant worker disappeared. Grass. Zhong Pinliang cursed, I remember what he looks like. Tomorrow, I will print a poster and have people go to various construction sites to find him. A migrant worker dared to kick me, and I made him unable to survive in Song's Han City. You wait for me. Yao Yao, I didn't see it. Lin Yi is quite fierce, even Zhong Pinliang dares to kick him. In the car, Chen Yushu widened his eyes and looked at what had just happened in disbelief. I think he's crazy. Chu Mengyao didn't expect Lin Yi to come up with such a move, but it was also ingenious. But Chu Mengyao has decided not to use him, no matter what he does, he will be considered unqualified. Yao Yao, why don't you keep him, suggested Chen Yushu. Xiao Xu, who are you looking at? Chu Mengyao glared at her and said strangely, you shouldn't have fallen in love with this migrant worker, right? Pu. Chen Yushu quickly shook his head and said, Yao Yao, you're only interested in him. You didn't like him, why did you ask him to stay? Staying here is embarrassing. Chu Mengyao was a bit puzzled. No, you think so? Zhong Pinliang dominates our school, and no one dares to provoke him. Finally, we have someone who is not afraid of him. There will be some fun in the future. Chen Yushu said mischievously, if the two of them fight, won't Zhong Pinliang have time to pester you? Let's start a fight. Do you think Zhong Pinliang is so easy to provoke? Chu Mengyao, however, spoke out the pros and cons in the middle. With just him as a small migrant worker, Zhong Pinliang won't kill him yet. Yao Yao, why are you so stupid? It depends on the owner to beat the dog, right? With you supporting him from behind, why are you afraid of Zhong Pinliang? Chen Yushu sneered and said, Besides, isn't there still me? Chapter 8 How did you fool my dad? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 0008 How did you fool my dad? Although the word count is not very high, we have such a large readership. We recommend supporting Lao Yu with our votes. Thank you, that's right, then let's stay and take a look. Chu Mengyao felt that Chen Yushu's words also made some sense, so she agreed and turned to ask Fubo, Fubo, have you bought insurance for him? In case something unexpected happens to him. Buying insurance. Fubo sweated again and thought to himself, Mr. Chu invited someone, where is it so easy for accidents to occur? However, he still said, 
don't worry, we've all bought it. At this moment, Lin Yi had already walked to the side of the car, opened the door, sat in the car, and looked at Chu Mengyao, saying, how's it going? It's pretty good, isn't it? You barely passed the level, Chu Mengyao snorted. Lin Yi smiled and sat back in the passenger seat. He didn't say much, but experience and the internet told him that women are often creatures of deceit, so Lin Yi wouldn't argue with Chu Mengyao. Seeing that Lin Yi just smiled and stopped speaking, Chu Mengyao couldn't help but feel angry. She thought he would say some words of gratitude. You know, in today's fiercely competitive society, there are still college graduates who have to dig up feces. A migrant worker who just entered the city found such a good job should be very happy, right? Hey, why don't you thank me a little? Chu Mengyao finally couldn't help but ask with some anger. Thank you. Thank you for what? Lin Yi felt a bit puzzled and thought to herself, I helped you kick the boy who was bothering you into the mud. You should be grateful to me, right? What do I thank you for? I. Chu Mengyao was extremely angry. How could this person react slowly? Does he still not understand what this implies to him? Don't he know how to please his employer? He he, what Yao Yao means is that she accepted you. Don't you express your gratitude? Chen Yushu explained to Chu Mengyao with a sly smile. Xiao Xu, what are you talking nonsense about? What did I accept him for? Chu Mengyao was startled by Chen Yushu's words, and the ambiguity in her words was too great, right? How does it sound like accepting a confession? It's nothing, I said you accepted him as your shield. Chen Yushu said with a smile. Oh, thank you. Lin Yi is quite sharp. In fact, if this job weren't a bit weird, he would still be very satisfied overall, at least with a high salary. You're welcome. Chu Mengyao burst out three words with resentment, feeling extremely resentful for Lin Yi's slow response. Does this person act as a shield for themselves? How do you think he's all silly? Yao Yao, I'm leaving. See you tomorrow, and you, Brother Arrow. The car stopped in front of a villa, and Chen Yushu waved to Chu Mengyao and blinked at Lin Yi in front of the car before getting off. Arrow Brother. Lin Yi smiled wryly, but this name is quite unique, and it's on par with the internet celebrity Brother Sharp. Chen Yushu's home is very close to Chu Mengyao's, with the villas facing each other. The front of the car turned around and arrived at Chu Mengyao's villa. Under the instigation of Chen Yushu, Chu Mengyao reluctantly accepted the migrant worker in front of her. However, when she saw the worker carrying luggage and walking into the villa with her, she immediately bombed the temple again and said, You. What are you doing with me? Lin Yi was taken aback for a moment, then inexplicably turned his head to look at Fubo and said, Don't I live here? You're quite presumptuous, I haven't had a man in my villa yet. Chu Mengyao pinched her waist and shouted fiercely at Lin Yi. Fubo wiped the cold sweat off his head and never entered a man. So what am I, Fubo thought to himself, it doesn't matter if he becomes a eunuch, but if Mr. Chu hears Mrs. words, he doesn't know how he would feel. Seeing Fubo wiping his sweat, Chu Mengyao immediately understood that her words seemed a bit ambiguous, so she quickly changed her tone and said, I mean, I haven't entered before, a man outside of my family. Miss, Mr. Chu said that you can get along well with Mr. Lin like your own brother. So, Mr. Lin will be living in the villa from today on, said Fubo carefully. This sister dot in dot law has a clear temper, Fubo. What? Chu Mengyao widened her eyes and pointed at Lin Yi with an incredulous expression. He. My brother. What a joke. Fubo, you can take him away and let him live anywhere you want. I'm afraid I can't make up my own mind about this, miss. It was entrusted by Mr. Chu, you see. Fubo said somewhat hesitantly. After all, he is a driver. Although he is the person that Chu Pengzhan trusts the most, it's really difficult to get caught between him and the young lady. Forget it, I personally agreed with daddy. 
Chu Mengyao took out the latest Nokia E7 from her pocket and dialed it out. It was a promotional gift from a while ago, and she and Chin Yushu bought one together. Lin Yi looked at the phone in Chu Mengyao's hand with some envy. Shouldn't she also buy a phone? Otherwise, making a phone call would be too inconvenient. Daddy, I'm far away. Chu Mengyao said in a greasy voice that was almost coquettish, making Lin Yi's heart tingle. It turns out that a girl's voice when acting coquettishly can be so pleasant to hear. It's Yao Yao, what's up? Chu Pengzhan was attending a meeting for the company, but when he saw his daughter's phone call, he still answered it. It's like this, Dad. What kind of shield did you find for me? Did you hire me casually from the farmer's market? Chu Mengyao was a bit angry. From childhood to adulthood, her father had never been so perfunctory about her. You say Xiaoyi, he he, he was specially invited by his father from Xixing Mountain for a long distance. He not only has good knowledge, but also good martial arts. What's even more rare is his better character. Chu Ping smiled and said. What? Chu Mengyao really didn't understand. The man in front of her had eaten some mesmerizing soup for her father. Why did he say three good words in a row? Upon hearing his daughter's words, Chu Pengzhan thought she was acting spoiled and said, He he, how are you? Are you quite satisfied with Xiaoyi? Satisfied? How could it be? First of all, his appearance is not up to par. If he serves as a shield for me, he will always make me look good, right? Chu Mengyao snorted, Also, Daddy, how could you ask him to live with me? I'm just a girl, how unsafe is it? Yes, Daddy is just considering your safety. As a girl living in a villa, Daddy is also worried, so he wants Xiaoyi to accompany you. Don't worry, Xiaoyi can protect you. Chu Pengzhan deliberately pretended not to understand his daughter's words. I, he. Chu Mengyao was momentarily puzzled by her father's words and didn't know what to say. However, before she could continue speaking, Chu Pengzhan heard him say, All right, Yao Yao, Daddy is holding a meeting with the middle level leaders of the company. Let's not talk about it for now. After speaking, before Chu Mengyao could say anything, she hung up the phone. Chu Mengyao gritted her teeth in anger, widened her eyes, and stared at Lin Yi intently, you know, how did you fool my dad? Chapter 9 Mighty General You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 0009 General Weiwu, request for recommendation votes, thank you everyone, Fubo left Chu Mengyao's villa on the grounds of returning to the company to pick up Mr. Chu from work. Before leaving, Lin Yi was given a backpack, which was said to be the school uniform and textbook for first high school. Miss, please feel free to call me if you have anything to do. Come and deliver dinner at 7 p.m. tonight, Fubo said and hurriedly left. Chu Mengyao looked at the man in front of her and didn't know what to say, but she couldn't let him sleep on the street, could she? My father is a well-known philanthropist and it's a bit different to let people know that he abuses his servants. After being angry for a while, Chu Mengyao finally thought of the culprit behind this incident. She took out her phone and dialed Chen Yushu's number, saying, Hey, Xiao Xu, my dad asked this migrant worker to live in my villa. What should I do? Yao Yao, you're talking about Arrow Brother. That's great. Tomorrow I'll go to school and tell you that you and he both live together, so no one will bother you anymore. Chen Yushu was comfortably lying on the Empress Dowager's bed, watching TV, and casually said after listening to Chu Mengyao's words. Chen Yushu. Chu Mengyao was about to explode with anger and yelled at the phone, Little girl, you're too ungrateful, aren't you? You asked me to keep him, and now you're talking cold words, right? You, come to my house immediately. Oh, okay. I'll take a shower, take a nap, and come find you tomorrow morning when I go to school," Chen Yushu said lazily. If I don't see you within a minute, I'll break up. Chu Mengyao said firmly. Oh my, they're all naked and ready to take a shower, and they still need to get dressed. 
Chen Yushu complained as he sat up from the sofa and admired his figure in the mirror. Hmm, it seemed like he had a little belly. It seems that we should eat less in the future. 50 seconds. Chu Mengyao looked at the call time on her phone and said. Oh, you have to lock the door, right? Chen Yushu quickly put on his clothes and said. 40 seconds. Chu Mengyao continued. All right, all right, I'm here. Chen Yushu put on his shoes and ran out of the door. Chen Yushu's villa is only a few dozen meters away from Chu Mengyao's villa. There is a small path between the two villas, facing each other diagonally in the distance. Seeing Chen Yushu's figure from afar, Chu Mengyao breathed a sigh of relief and hung up the phone. Yao Yao, what are you doing? They just took off their clothes and were about to take a shower, so you called me out, Chen Yushu complained. Cough cough. Chu Mengyao coughed twice, pointed to Lin Yi, and then said, Xiao Xu, there are outsiders around. Be careful when speaking. Oh, it's okay, Chen Yushu said nonchalantly, Brother Arrow, they're all his own people. Since you and he are our own people, let him stay at your house. That's the decision. Chu Mengyao looked at Chen Yushu's gloating expression and was very unhappy. Ah. Uh. Chen Yushu spat out his tongue and smiled innocently, Yao Yao, you know me. I like to strip naked when I go home, so it's not convenient for him to live in. Is it convenient to stay at my house? Chu Mengyao cursed in her heart that Chen Yushu was not righteous. Oh, what a simple thing. Chen Yushu shook his head and said, Yao Yao, you let her stay at your house. Why don't you come and stay at my house? Well, you're right. Chu Mengyao felt that Chen Yushu finally came up with a somewhat constructive idea. However, Chu Mengyao immediately became somewhat unhappy and gave her villa to a migrant worker to live in. Why? Besides, what should I do if I lose something? No way. He can't live alone in my villa. Chu Mengyao gritted her teeth and said. Chen Yushu was also in a difficult situation. He had asked Chu Mengyao to keep Lin Yi for fun before, but now the problem is, let Lin Yi live in Chen Yushu's villa. Chen Yushu will definitely not agree. After hesitating for a while, Chen Yushu finally came up with a compromise solution. How about I live with you and ask him to live downstairs? Anyway, your room is upstairs, so we won't ask him to go up to the second floor. Chu Mengyao listened to Chen Yushu's suggestion and felt that it was the only way, so she reluctantly nodded and said, All right, then let's do it this way. Chen Yushu often lived with Chu Mengyao, so he walked in with ease. And Lin Yi, carrying his luggage, slowly followed behind. Chu Mengyao had hostility towards him, and Lin Yi could naturally see it. However, when he thought of the old man's solemn instructions when he left home and the trusting gaze of Uncle Chu, Lin Yi didn't think much of it. After all, Chu Mengyao is a girl, so it's normal for her to not want to live with her. Hey, what's your name? Chu Mengyao sat on the sofa and threw her slender calves onto the bed of the Empress Dowager, looking at Lin Yi and asking. My name is Lin. Lin Yi said as she wanted to sit on the sofa. Standing at the door for half a day was already tiring, but before her buttocks could touch the sofa, she heard a soft scolding that startled Lin Yi. Stop. Don't sit. Chu Mengyao widened her glasses and pointed at Lin Yi, shouting loudly. What's wrong? Lin Yi was startled and hung his butt in mid-air, asking in surprise. Your pants are so dirty, don't get my sofa dirty. Xiao Xu often lies on them naked. Chu Mengyao frowned and said. Chen Yu rolled his eyes in relief and thought to himself, Yao Yao, why are you doing this? Just now, I said I should pay attention to the content of my speech in front of outsiders. It's better for you to say it yourself. Lin Yi was not angry either. His clothes were indeed not very clean. He sat on the train for half a day and then ran for half a day in a dusty environment. If he dirted the sofa and caused this little beauty to develop skin diseases, it would be over. All right, you can continue speaking. 
Chu Mengyao breathed a sigh of relief as she saw Lin Yi stand up. My name is Lin Yi, Lin Yi said. Okay, Lin Yi, you'll sleep in the guest room over there at night, but remember, upstairs is my room with Xiao Xu. You're not allowed to go up, otherwise I'll immediately ask Daddy to dismiss you. When Chu Mengyao said this, she didn't even have enough confidence in herself. For some reason, she always felt that her father had been mesmerized by this Lin Yi. So, speaking of this, she had to add. If you dare to go up, I'll have General Wei Wu bite you. Oh, Lin Yi nodded nonchalantly, but after hearing the latter half of Chu Mengyao's words, he asked somewhat puzzled, General Wei Wu. What is that? Upon hearing Lin Yi's question, Chu Mengyao proudly shouted to the upstairs, General Wei Wu, come down. Wang Wang. A burst of dog barking came, and a fierce Rottweiler rushed down from the upstairs, standing beside Chu Mengyao with a watchful eye, watching Lin Yi with caution. Please vote for your valuable recommendation to Lao Yu. Thank you. Thank you to the friends who reward and support Lao Yu. Thank you. The growth of the new book is inseparable from your support. Chapter 10 Bad Ideas You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 0010 Bad Ideas Lin Yi sneered a bit, not to mention dogs. While carrying out missions in the deep mountains, many wolves were beaten to death by his own slap and his teeth were sacrificed, so a rowena was naturally not a problem. C. This is General Wei Wu. I'll tell you, he's very powerful. If you dare to go upstairs, I'll make him bite you. Chu Mengyao threatened. I understand. Lin Yi nodded. Seeing Lin Yi's cautious appearance, Chu Mengyao thought he was afraid of General Wei Wu, and her heart became even more proud. She pulled Chen Yushu up the stairs, leaving General Wei Wu to guard. Lin Yi picked up his luggage on the ground and glared at General Wei Wu. General Wei Wu trembled all over and dodged backwards. It seemed to feel that the person in front of him was extraordinary and dangerous. Lin Yi didn't have the leisure to play with the dog either. After glaring at it, he ignored him and carried his luggage to the room that Chu Mengyao had mentioned before. The decoration inside the room is very simple, with only one bed, a writing desk, and a small wardrobe. However, these things are already enough for Lin Yi to use. The luggage he brought with him only had a few tattered clothes, and there was nothing else. What surprised Lin Yi the most was that there was a separate restroom in the room, just like a big hotel. Lin Yi put away his luggage and walked into the bathroom with a towel. The hustle and bustle all the way covered Lin Yi's body with dust. Looking at the watch, it's not yet six o'clock. Before Fubo comes to deliver the meal, Lin Yi plans to take a shower. So far, Lin Yi is still very satisfied with his current job and work environment. He receives the same treatment as staying in a hotel every day and can still earn 30,000 yuan. Where can he find this job? It's much more comfortable than helping the old man weave grass shoes at home. Xiao Shu, I regret it a bit. Lin Yi doesn't seem like someone who can be my shield at all. Chu Mengyao changed into a new set of home clothes and complained to Chen Yushu. I think he's doing quite well, Chen Yushu lay in bed, leaning her legs upside down against the wall. She didn't know where to see it, but it could help slim down his legs and promote development. What's so good? Originally, I was thinking of finding someone handsome to impersonate my boyfriend, but now it's better to get a cheesy old hat and take it out without being laughed at. Chu Mengyao gritted her teeth in anger and said, If you think he's good, you can be his girlfriend. I'm not in trouble, I don't need a shield. Otherwise, I might even consider it, Chen Yushu said, shaking his head. You have an older brother who is a military officer, who dares to provoke you. If I had an older brother who could kick a big tree off with just one kick, I wouldn't have to look for any shield. Chu Mengyao knew that Chen Yushu was deliberately angry with her, but who would have let someone have an older brother, and she wouldn't have it. Yao Yao, why don't I ask my brother to find a godbrother for you in the army? Chen Yushu blinked and said, 
why don't you think Brother Qing is okay? Why don't Zhong Pinliang stand aside obediently? Xiao Xu Chu Mengyao widened her eyes in anger as she listened to Qin Yushu's more and more words. What kind of bad ideas are you giving me? You said you asked my father to find a shield for me before, but... Look, who did you find? Can he be used as a shield? Now you've given me such a devilish idea again, why bother, brother? It's so annoying. All right, all right, I won't say it anymore. Chen Yushu saw that Chu Mengyao was really angry, so he quickly closed his mouth and didn't dare to say anything more. Indeed, the idea of finding a shield was given to Chu Mengyao by her, but the person she found now didn't meet her expectations, and she also had some responsibility when Fubo came to deliver dinner, Lin Yi had just taken a shower and rummaged through his luggage. Surprisingly, he didn't have any decent clothes. Lin Yi couldn't help but complain that the old man was really stingy and couldn't buy him a new one. I estimate that wearing these clothes will still be considered dirty by Chu Mengyao after going out, and she won't even be able to sit on the sofa. Unable to do anything, Lin Yi casually opened the bag that Fubo had given him and took out the school uniform from City No. 1 High School to wear. Lin Yi's new image stunned both Chu Mengyao and Chin Yushu. Previously disheveled and disheveled, wearing tattered and heartfelt pants, now after taking a shower, he appears refined and refined. Paired with the school uniform, he looks completely different from the previous image of a migrant worker. However, the first impression of Lin Yi was really a bit bad, so Chu Mengyao would never admit that Lin Yi is a handsome guy. She could only say that he is stronger and more pleasing to the eye than before. Fubo brought four dishes and one soup, one fish-flavored shredded pork, one boiled fish, one stir-fried cabbage, and one spinach braised black fungus. The soup is mushroom soup. A combination of meat and vegetables, perfect in color, aroma, and taste. Lin Yi hadn't had such a delicious meal for a long time. Seeing that Fubo had also prepared his rice box, he happily took it and sat down at the dining table. Lin Yi was about to use her chopsticks, but Chu Mengyao refused and said, What are you doing? Neither Xiao Xu nor I have eaten yet, so why don't you eat first? In the future, Xiao Xu and I will eat first, and you can eat any dishes you don't want. As she spoke, she turned around and went to the kitchen. She had a habit of eating and liked to use silver tableware, which she had developed when living with her grandfather since childhood. So, in the disinfection cabinet in the kitchen, there is a pair of silver tableware specifically designed for Chu Mengyao. For Chu Mengyao's domineering behavior, Lin Yi could only smile bitterly, withdrew his chopsticks, and looked at the delicious food on the table, only leaving a drool. Fortunately, the rice was his own. Lin Yifei quickly took a few bites into his mouth, possibly because he was eating too quickly. As a result, he choked and blurted, is there anything to drink? Chen Yushu looked at the man who seemed to have never eaten in his eight lifetimes and was a bit amused. He pointed to the nearby fresh dot keeping cabinet and said, What do you want to drink? Take it yourself. Oh, Lin Yi turned his head and saw a large fresh dot keeping cabinet filled with various drinks. Lin Yi casually took out a bottle of orange juice, opened the lid, and took a big sip before feeling much more comfortable. Chu Mengyao retrieved the tableware and began to discuss the dishes on the table with Chen Yushu. Wow, boiled fish is my favorite. This fish-flavored shredded meat is a bit sweet. Damn the chef, don't you know if eating too much sugar can easily lead to weight gain? I'll definitely ask daddy to dismiss him someday. Well, this little cabbage is really delicious. Xiao Xu, you should also try it. Chu Mengyao chattered while eating. These dishes are all made by hotel chefs under the Pengzhan group of Chu Pengzhan, and are delivered on time every night by Fubo. Chu Pengzhan had a lot of socializing, but Chu Mengyao's mother ran away from home when she was very young. Chu Mengyao was not sure why, because every time she mentioned this matter to her father, he always refused to tell her. So, Chu Mengyao's life is basically taken care of by Fubo. 
Lao Yu needs everyone's recommended ticket support. Thank you all.